Welcome back. We're here today with a 2022 Kia EV6 all-wheel drive GT line with the large battery pack, the 77.4 kilowatt hour battery pack. I just finished the inside EV's 70 mile an hour highway range test with this guy and it went 245 miles at a constant 70 miles an hour. Now that we've just drained the battery from 100% completely down to zero, we're gonna plug her into this Electrify America 350 kilowatt DC fast charger and record the full zero to 100% charge testing. As always, we'll be providing some charts, we'll analyze it and we'll see just how good of a charging electric vehicle the Kia EV6 is. But first, don't forget, click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content here on State of Charge. Okay, so as I said, we had the EV6 with the large battery pack, that's 77 kilowatt hour. There's also a standard range battery pack that's only 58 kilowatt hour, but we have the larger battery pack for the testing here. Now the EV6 is based on Kia's eGMP platform, that's Electric Global Modular Platform, and it's shared with Hyundai, the Ionic 5 uses it, and future upcoming Hyundai and Kia electric vehicles. And that's based on an 800 volt battery architecture. Most electric vehicles today use a 400 volt battery architecture. There are some other EVs like the Porsche Taycan uh, and uh, the GMC Hummer EV now that have 800 volt systems. But what that does is it allows the vehicle to charge at a higher DC fast charging rate. And the Kia EV6 can accept up to 230 kilowatt. That's a really high DC fast charging rate. But as you know, if you watch this channel, the whole charging curve is what's really most important. And that's what we're going to take a look at now. Now, Kia claims a 10 to 80% DC fast charge rate of 18 minutes, but that's under perfect conditions. And most of the time, owners aren't going to always incur perfect charging conditions. So if you have an EV6 and you don't always hit 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. Well, you won't always hit 10 to 80% in 18 minutes. It's because there's a lot of other factors involved, namely the temperature of the battery. So let's take a look at my full zero to 100% recording now, see how well it did. And then we're gonna follow it up with a couple of 10 to 80% recordings I did to see if I could match Kia's claim of 10 to 80% in only 18 minutes. The EV6 busts out of the gate, ripping it, and is accepting over 200 kilowatt by the one minute mark. That's what you wanna see, the vehicle immediately taking in a lot of power. Now we're at 25% state of charge in five minutes and 50% state of charge after only 10 minutes. Are you kidding me? According to my 70 mile an hour highway range test that I just did, I just added back 122 miles and 10 minutes or an average about 12 miles per minute. Now the fastest charging EV I've ever tested is the Lucid Air, and that returned 15 miles of range per minute. This is very close. The EV6 rips it and is a great charging electric vehicle. Okay, so before we move on, I wanna point out, you'll notice here that we're charging at 180 kilowatt now. The charge rate had been gradually increasing ever since we first plugged in and it peaked at 228 kilowatt, only about 20 seconds before I made this screenshot. So right at the 10 minute mark, it starts its ramp down. From here on out, we're gonna be drawing in less power, but let's see how much less and how quickly the EV6 ramps down its power. We hit 60% state of charge three minutes later and everything looks great as we're holding 114 kilowatt until the 15 minute mark when we're at 65% state of charge because the charge rate literally falls off a cliff at that point. It instantly drops down to only 32 kilowatt and it holds that for five minutes. Then at the 20 minute mark, it jumps back up to 114 kilowatt. There's some serious thermal throttling going on there. Now for the next six minutes, the charge rate gradually climbs back up to 119 kilowatt but then at 83% state of charge, bang, we fall off the cliff again, and now we're down to charging at under 10 kilowatt. That's slower than the EV6 can charge from a level two charging source. It does so for about four minutes before it starts climbing back up over 110 kilowatt, but it only does that for about a minute. 
Then it drops all the way down to about 60 kilowatt. The vehicle reaches 90% state of charge in only 35 minutes. And it reaches 95% state of charge six minutes later at the 41 minute mark. And we complete the full zero to 100% charging session in a very respectable 53 minutes. This video is sponsored by QMerit, North America's largest network of electric vehicle charging station installation professionals. I know you may be tempted to install your own EV charging equipment, but I urge you to use a licensed professional to do so. Working with a 240 volt circuit can be extremely dangerous for non-professionals. The wiring may look simple, but there are many best practices that electricians follow that the average homeowner doesn't know about, and it could come back to haunt you. Something as small is not using the proper gauge wire nuts for the heavy continuous high amperage load of EV charging can potentially lead to a fire. So follow the link in the description of this video and a local QMerit electrician will provide you with a no obligation, no hassle, free estimate. Pretty impressive, right? So now let's take a look at it on paper because I've mapped out the full charging curve so we can get a better picture of exactly what was going on during that full charging session. So as I mentioned before, you can see the EV6 jumps out to over 200 kilowatt immediately, which is what we love to see. Not all electric vehicles immediately jump up to such a high power intake within the first minute. Now the charge rate continues to climb all the way up to just about 50% state of charge, which happens to be in only 10 minutes. That's awesome. For comparison, my Tesla Model 3 has just about the same size battery as the EV6, and on a V3 supercharger, it reaches 41% state of charge after 10 minutes. The EV6 is at 50%, so that's outstanding. Now that's because of this awesome charging curve and how the EV6 holds its high charging rate for such a long time. Look at the charging curve of my Model 3. Sure, it peaks at a higher rate of 250 kilowatt, but only for a few minutes, and then it ramps down its power intake. This is the EV6 advantage, and it's because of its 800 volt battery system. After 50%, we see a couple of quick drops here, and then at 60% to about 85%, it seems to want to hold about 115 kilowatt, but there are two thermal throttling events when the vehicle rapidly reduces its charging intake so the thermal management system can cool things off. If we didn't have the two thermal throttling events, we could have achieved the zero to 90% DC fast charging time of about 35 minutes. As it is, it took 41 minutes, which is still very good. And this is what the charging curve would look like if we didn't have those two thermal throttling events. Now, of course, once the EV6 reaches 85% state of charge, the charging power gradually drops off till 100%. But what's really impressive here is the zero to about 85% and how high the charging power is up until about 84% state of charge. The vehicle is still pulling in close to 120 kilowatt. Okay, so while the zero to 100% charging session gives you the whole picture of what the EV6 can do from dead all the way up to fully charged, now I wanna take a look at the 10 to 80% claim that Kia makes that the vehicle can charge in 18 minutes from 10% up to 80%. So I did this twice, once on an Electrify America 150 kilowatt DC fast charger, and then on a 350 kilowatt DC fast charger. Now Kia will say that in order to achieve the 10 to 80%, it has to be on a 350 kilowatt unit because the charging station has to be able to deliver as much power as the EV6 can take in. But I thought I would do this twice, once on each station, so EV6 owners could see exactly how long it's gonna take if they're on a 150 kilowatt station and the 350 kilowatt station. So let's take a look at that now on a side-by-side -side comparison. After five minutes, the 150 kilowatt unit has the EV6 at 24% state of charge, while the 350 kilowatt unit has the car at 35%. In 10 minutes, the lead has now widened to 38% compared to 58% for the 350 kilowatt unit. Now after 20 minutes, the 150 kilowatt unit is starting to catch up because the EV6 charging on the 350 kilowatt unit 
is already slowing down its charging rate and it's also undergoing some major thermal throttling. Now the lead is only 14% with the 350 kilowatt charger at 76% state of charge and 62% for the car charging on the 150 kilowatt unit. The 350 kilowatt unit completes the full 10 to 80% charging session in 22 minutes. That's four minutes longer than the 18 minute time that Kia promises. And the 150 kilowatt unit needs eight more minutes, finishing up in exactly 30 minutes. So now let's take a look at those two charge recordings on our charging power chart. Then I'm gonna compare it to the zero to 100% charging session that we watched previously. When I'm done with that, we're then gonna put everything on our time to charge charts that shows how many miles per minute is adding in all three charging sessions. The charging curves are very similar with the 350 kilowatt station delivering over 210 kilowatt from the start and the EV6 charging on the 150 kilowatt unit is pulling about 130 kilowatt. The power drawer increases slightly on both charging sessions for a while as the pack voltage gradually increases and the vehicle is requesting the same amperage from both charging stations. But the power intake drops sooner on the 350 kilowatt unit at around 47% state of charge. And that's a very similar point to when it dropped on my zero to 100% charging session. So that's definitely part of the EV6's program charging curve. The 150 kilowatt unit keeps delivering the same power a little longer and drops off at 53% state of charge. But after a couple minutes, it bounces back up to 136 kilowatt for two minutes. So it looks like this event here is more thermal throttling than it is actually programmed charging curve. Now I'm gonna compare the zero to 100% and the 10 to 80% charging sessions that were both done on the 350 kilowatt charging stations. As you can see, the charging curves are very similar and the vehicle even throttled its charge rate way down to only 30 kilowatt after the same amount of time charging in both sessions. The state of charge is different, but the drastic drop in charging power in both charging sessions occurred after 16 minutes of charging. So 16 minutes is about as long as it takes to overheat whatever is causing the vehicle to throttle back power for a few minutes until it cools off a bit and then power returns. Now let's add the 10% to 80% charging session on the 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. It's a pretty flat charging curve with the exception of these two power drops. The second one is part of the program charging curve. And the first one is a brief thermal throttling, which happens, you guessed it, 16 minutes into the charging session. And finally, we have the ever important time to charge chart, where on the X axis, we have the charging time in minutes and on the Y axis is the vehicle's state of charge. In blue, we have our zero to 100% charging session on the 350 kilowatt station. In orange, it's the 10 to 80% session on the 350 kilowatt station. And in the gray, we have our 10 to 80% on the 150 kilowatt charging station. So first up, let's take a look at the zero to 100% charging session and how long it takes to add 100 miles and then 200 miles of driving range. Now I'm going to look at the EPA range rating of 274 miles and also my personal 70 mile an hour highway range test figure of 245 miles. So if we look at the EPA range rating, it takes eight minutes to recover 100 miles of driving range and that happens at the 37% state of charge point. Now, if you look at my 70 mile an hour highway range rating, we need to get to the 41% state of charge point, but that also happens during the eight minute mark. It just took about 40 seconds longer. So eight minutes, you can recover about hundred miles of driving range, whether you use the EPA figure or my range rating. Now it changes a little bit when we go to 200 miles of range added, because if you use the EPA range figure, you need to add 73% of the battery and that happens after 22 minutes of charging. If you use my highway range test, 
you need to get to 82% state of charge. And that takes four minutes longer at the 26 minute point. Now let's take a look at the ever important miles per minute added for all three charging sessions. First up, let's take a look at the zero to 100% session. From zero to 80%, if you use the EPA range rating of 274 miles, we're averaging 8.76 miles per minute of charging added. If you use my 70 mile an hour highway range test, we're adding 7.84 miles per minute. Now take a look at the 80% to 100%, and I specifically broke it up into these two sections to show you how much slower the car charges after you reach 80%. If you use the EPA range rating, you're going to get 1.96 miles for every minute you charge after the vehicle reaches 80%. And if you use my range test figure, 1.75 miles per minute. That really demonstrates how it's not worth staying at a DC fast charger past 80% unless you absolutely need the range. Because look at how much slower the car charges. Now let's take a look at the 10 to 80% charging session on the 350 kilowatt Electrify America unit. So from 10 to 80%, we're adding 70% of the battery. We are adding 8.72 miles per minute according to the EPA range rating. And if you use my 70 mile an hour highway range rating, we're adding 7.8 miles for every minute of charging. That's a really good DC fast charging rate there. And finally, let's take a look at the 10 to 80% charging session on the 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. If you use the EPA as your measuring stick, you're getting 6.39 miles per minute added. And if you use my 70 mile an hour range test of 245 miles, you're gonna get 5.82 miles added for every minute of charging on a 150 kilowatt DC fast charger. Well, that's it for our Kia EV6. DC fast charging analysis. I tell you, coming into this, I knew the EV6 was a great charging electric vehicle. But after really studying the videos and looking at it on my graphs, I'm even more impressed. It's really a fantastic charging electric vehicle. And the same goes for the Hyundai Ionic 5. They basically charge the same. If this is your first time here at State of Charge, please don't forget, Click that subscribe button and ring the notification bell so you don't miss any upcoming content. And as always, thanks for watching.